Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What am I bringing to you today? Today I am bringing to you a Christmas DIY using these rulers that you can get at Walmart. I believe they're about 27 cents, sometimes they're 42 cents. I really don't know what they're priced right now because I picked these up at 99 cent store and I got a four pack for 99 cents. So if you have a 99 cent store near you, that is definitely the place to go and grab a few packs of these because I have got some really great fun ruler DIYs in the past, one that I'm bringing you now and some in the future that you are not gonna wanna miss. And these are such budget friendly rulers that they make for budget friendly DIYs and stinking adorable ones as well. Today's DIY, like I said, is a Christmas inspired DIY. And this DIY is one that is inspired by a DIY that I saw on Pinterest. This is nothing new, but I am putting my own twist on it using rulers and incorporating my quilted Christmas theme into it. This is one you're not gonna wanna miss. This theme is based on some snowmen that I would say I did about two years ago, and this was a piece that I wanted to add to them. And so I'm just now getting around to doing it, and I am so excited because the outcome turned out amazing, and I love it. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it, and let me show you what I do with these rulers today for a Christmas quilted themed DIY. That was a mouthful. Getting started, you are going to need nine of these wood rulers. I got these two four packs from the 99 cent store, which is a great buy. If you don't have access to a 99 cent store, you can buy these individually at Walmart, anywhere from 27 cents to 42 cents a piece. Out of the nine rulers, I'm gonna keep three at 12 inches, and I'm gonna cut six of the rulers down to two at 10 inches, two at eight inches, and two at six inches. When cutting down these rulers, there's no need for a saw. You can easily do it by placing your wood ruler on some kind of a cutting mat and using another ruler as a guide. And if you use a straight edge razor and you score the wood several times, you should easily be able to bend it and break it apart. Now, don't worry if your break isn't a clean break. Just by taking a piece of sandpaper, you can easily smooth out your edges and nobody's gonna be none the wiser. You can see on my rulers that I did fill in the holes because I wasn't sure where I was exactly gonna go with this project and I filled the holes in with the spackling that you can get from the Dollar Tree. This ended up being an unnecessary step so it's not one you need to worry about unless you're not using fabric. If you are, this is the spackling and like I said, you can find it at the Dollar Tree. When I initially painted the rulers, I used Waverly's chalk paint in the color of hazelnut. Later on, I ended up changing the color because I didn't much like the way it was going. Whatever color it is you use, you're gonna paint just the number side of your rulers with that color. And on the back side of my rulers, I'll be using Waverly's chalk paint in the color of white. And because this is a quilted Christmas, you guessed it, I will be incorporating some fabric into this DIY. This is a hot cocoa fabric that I got a few years ago from Walmart. It is one of my all-time favorite Christmas fabrics. I'm gonna take and place some Mod Podge on the white side of my rulers. Now that's why I painted this back side white. Because this fabric is a lighter fabric, I didn't want the paint to show through. So once I give all of my rulers a good coating of Mod Podge, I'm gonna place these face down onto the back side of my fabric. Then I'm gonna flip over my fabric and I'm gonna give the front side a good coat of Mod Podge as well. Now, because I'm using three different fabrics, I'm gonna take three different size rulers and I'm gonna put three different size rulers on each piece of fabric. 
This is one of those DIYs that's a great DIY to dig into your scraps because you don't need very much fabric at all. Once the fabric in the Mod Posh is good and dry on my rulers using a straight edge razor, I'm gonna cut the excess fabric off of all nine of the rulers. For this next step, I will be using one of these box wall decor pieces that you can get from the Dollar Tree year round and some of Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber Brown paint. I'm gonna give this piece a nice good few coatings of this paint, making sure to really cover up the design so it doesn't show through the paint. And as usual, to speed up the drying process, I will be popping this in my oven that I have preheated to 135 degrees, which is the lowest temperature that it'll go. You're safe to go as high as 150 degrees without discoloring your piece. By popping it in the oven, it really does speed up the drying process and keeps the DIY moving a bit quicker. Once the base coat of paint is good and dry, I'm gonna go over it with some of this Crackle Medium by Folk Art. This is a medium that you can get at Michael's for fairly inexpensive. Using a coupon, you should be able to get it for about three or four dollars. I'm gonna be generous with the amount that I place on this because I'm really going for a good crackle effect. I'm trying to emulate the look of tree bark because this is gonna be the base of a tree. The more of a crackle effect you want, the more generous you're gonna be with this medium. The lighter effect that you want, you're gonna be a bit more light-handed when applying this. After I've got this good and covered, I'm gonna really let this dry and let this medium cure before I move on to the top coat. For the top coat, I wanted to go with a bit of a lighter brown, and so I decided to mix some of Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber and just a regular white acrylic paint to get the lighter brown that I was going for. I am really liking this color brown, and so this is what I'm gonna place over the top of this. Now, when applying this top coat over the medium, you really wanna make sure and move kinda quickly because for whatever reason, the paint dries fast, and as you're applying it, you're gonna see the crackle effect take place pretty quickly. You also wanna make sure and not go over your spots more than one time because if you continually go over your spots, you're gonna ruin the effect of the crackle medium and it'll start to peel up, so you just wanna be quick about the way you apply it and just kind of go over in one or two fair swoops and you're gonna get an amazing outcome. At the beginning, I had shown you that I originally painted the back sides of these rulers with Waverly's hazelnut paint. I really wasn't happy with the look of the color and so I did go back over it with this brown that I just made with the burnt umber and the white because I liked it so much and it went so well with the fabric. For the center part of my tree, I'll be using these two gather signs that I had left over from Fall and Harvest. This was decor from the Dollar Tree that they're no longer carrying. I'm gonna give you an alternative. And I'll also be using some of this new wood glue by Crafter Square that the Dollar Tree also just started carrying. I gotta tell you, if your Dollar Tree has this and you have access to it, it is an amazing glue and I've seen great results with it so far. I'm gonna glue these two signs together side by side and I'm gonna put just a bit of painter's tape on all three sides just to make sure that it stays good and close. Now, an alternative to these signs is using these wood, I guess, moldings that you can get from either Lowe's or Home Depot, really any hardware store. They are one and a half inches wide by three quarter inches thick. You can get a six or eight foot piece for about two or three dollars. And so if you really like this DIY, you can make several of it. Once my two pieces were good and glued together nice and dry, I did go over them with the light brown paint that I made using the burnt umber and the white. I decided to go in reverse of the base. And so the base coat, for the center of my tree is the light brown. I'm gonna go over it with my crackle medium and then I'm gonna apply the top coat, which will be just the burnt umber brown. And so the cracks will be this light brown and the bark will be the dark brown. This here is by far my favorite part of DIY. You've got all your pieces done, painted, put together. Now it's time to actually put the DIY together and see your finished project. And so I'm gonna start off by placing my rulers from largest to smallest and build up this tree. And I'm gonna place my first 12 inch ruler about four inches from the bottom because we wanna have a tree stump. 
And as I place my rulers, I'm gonna evenly space them and I'm gonna make them cockeyed, kind of offset them from the ruler below it. And like I said, I'm gonna start with the 12 inch rulers, then I'm gonna go to the 10 inch, then the eight inch, then the six inch. A great alternative to the wood rulers would be these raw wood paint stirs that you can get, I think for free from your local hardware store. And if you have to pay for them, I'm guessing that they're not gonna be very much. When doing a project like this, I don't necessarily measure out where I'm gonna place specific items. So like in this case, it would be the rulers. I just like to kind of set them out before I glue them so I can eyeball it and get them into the position that I'm happy with before I glue them. I'm just gonna use hot glue to glue my rulers onto the base of this tree. There's really no need to use any other glue. The hot glue is gonna work perfectly. And you can see that by placing one of each size ruler onto each of the different fabrics, how it kind of came into play here by alternating the colors onto each size as you go up the tree. And again, with the hot glue, I'm gonna use that to glue my tree onto the center of the base. Once I glued the trunk of the tree onto the base, the contrast between the light base and the dark trunk was really bothering me. I wasn't happy with it. After pondering it a bit, I came up with the idea of covering the base with coffee grounds to actually give it more texture, actually give it that look of dirt. And so to apply the coffee grounds, I'm gonna put a really generous amount of Mod Podge to this base. And when I say generous, you really wanna be generous because you want a nice coating to adhere onto this base. Once I've got it completely covered in Mod Podge, I'm gonna take just a dollar bag of Dollar Tree's coffee grounds, and I'm just gonna cover the base with this. Once you've got it good and covered, if you're worried about the coffee grounds actually flaking off, if you take a can of aerosol hairspray and spray those coffee grounds, give them a nice good coating of hairspray, this will prevent them from flaking off. I feel like you can't have a tree this time of year without a star at the top, so I'm gonna use one of Dollar Tree's wood plaque stars by Crafter Square for the top of my tree. To paint it, I'm gonna start off with a base coat of Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber, followed by a coating of the Folk Art Crackle Medium, and then I'm gonna to top it off with some of Waverly's White Chalk Paint and just hot glue this to the top of the tree on the back of that top ruler there. I feel like this DIY needs one last finishing touch and that's using some of Tim Holtz Walnut Distress Ink and a stiffer brush. I'm gonna go in and distress all of the edges of my star with this Distress Ink. I feel like this star is just too stark of a white. It's not rustic enough for the decor of my home. And so I feel like that just is gonna give it the touch, that finishing final touch that I'm looking for, that warm, quilted Christmas feeling that I'm going for. And so you can easily achieve this just by adding some of this ink to the outside edges, kind of dirtying up the inside of the star just a bit. Once I did the star, I felt like I wanted to go in and distress each of the rulers, each of the branches on the outside edge. Once I did that, I was completely happy with the look of this tree, and I can honestly say that this is what I was going for. Okay, I gotta say it, this set is so stinking cute, and this tree is the perfect finishing touch to these three snowmen that I actually did three or four years ago. I'll link that video in the description box below. I had wanted to do this for some time and just never got around to doing it. And I am so glad that I did because this is a piece that I will most definitely be putting on the hearth of my fireplace along with those snowmen for every Christmas from here on out. And there you have a Christmas tree that I made out of rulers and incorporated my quilted Christmas by covering those rulers with fabric. I love the outcome of this. And like I said, I really made this piece because I really wanted it to go with the snowmen that I made several years ago. If you have not seen that DIY, it is an older one. I will link that video in the description box below. Those snowmen are so stinking easy to do and the outcome is so stinking cute, I can hardly stand it. This is one of those DIYs that can very easily be made to suit any decor style because of its versatility. 
really it's up to you get creative and make it your own I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day, happy crafting on a budget, and bye for now everybody.